Hello y'all, it is I, Zyp Guy. If you've been following my channel long enough and saw this short, you'll know that I already talked about this topic. However, I believe so much has changed in the tech industry that it merits an updated discussion. I've decided against making this video into a short and instead just want to have a debate style video where I talk about the pros and cons of each and talk about some cases in the past where both have succeeded and failed. I just want to say before we start comparing, this isn't about which one is better or worse and which one you should use and which one is higher quality. The purpose of this video is to list out the pros and cons and that only. Without further ado, let's start. Right after I tell you about my new game, Thievery Online. Thievery Online is a game we're developing as Zyap Media. Yeah, I started a game studio with a couple of friends and yeah, that's why I've been gone so long. And also, you know, university. And yes, there will be devlogs and other stuff coming. It's a cops and robbers style shooter game where a team of thieves try to steal from a bank, a mansion, a warehouse, and another team of guards try to stop them. We hope to have an open alpha soon, so be on the lookout for that. The first five people to comment heist me, Shiba man, will receive an early access Steam key for the game. There are also three codes hidden in this video somewhere. I'd appreciate it if you could take 30 seconds of your time to wishlist it on Steam, as that's what really helps games get featured. Thank you. Alright, let's start this debate by discussing what open source software is. By my definition, open source software is software that has its source code available to the public. It's usually stored in GitHub or GitLab, and most of the time, these projects are written and maintained by volunteers. For example, Godot is a game engine that is open source. Godot, Godot, good, I don't know, don't bully me in the comments, I'm not familiar with it too much. If there are problems with the software like bugs or exploits, or if you want to have a feature added, you can add it, fix it yourself, and have it merged into the main repository. Also, with many open source projects, the licenses are very light, which allows you to modify them, use them in your own projects, and even redistribute them. Now let's talk about proprietary software. Before you raise your pitchforks at me, let me remind you, we're discussing the pros right now. Just wanted to remind you before you write an entire thesis paper in the comments about why I'm such a corporate di <laughs> Sorry, I was gone for nine months. I have to relearn the YouTube lingo. Proprietary software is software that does not have its source code publicly available. It's usually paid software with a license or a subscription service. Proprietary software is mostly developed by corporations rather than individuals. And because of this fact, this type of software is usually developed under higher standards and meant for enterprise use or professional use. For example, the Unity game engine, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Windows, Adobe Photoshop are all proprietary software. Well, even Adobe Premiere, the software I'm using to edit this video right now, this is also proprietary software. Problems like bugs or exploits are usually found via QA teams and are solved internally. Features are added internally, and what features are chosen to be added is not up to the user. However, if a feature is very expensive or difficult to solve, the company has a much higher budget for engineering and testing, especially if an enterprise customer is source of the ticket. Now it's time for cons. We will start with open source software. The main problem with open source software is unreliability. There are many cases where an integral piece of software is written and maintained exclusively by some guy in Finland who wrote it in 2007 for fun and died in a boating accident in 2012, and some extremely important banking software is based on it. One zero-day exploit and the entire infrastructure of the world collapses. Thankfully, big corporations usually sponsor these projects, either in a monetary way or by assigning their developers to it. However, maintainers can be malicious sometimes. For example, a backdoor was added to XZUtils by a maintainer, which would have caused terrible problems for everyone had it not been discovered. Another problem with open source software is that, although not always, Open source alternatives to proprietary software are usually of lower quality. They are very good most of the time, but sometimes they lack important things. An example is Kden Live vs Sony Vegas, which I assume is the intended alternative because I believe it resembles it the most. Kden Live is great and I even edited this video with it, but in general, the paid proprietary alternative is better for professional and enterprise use. One example where this doesn't apply, however, is with Godot and Unity. 
I'm not saying Godot is a Unity alternative, but I'm counting this because they're both popular game engines. In this case, Godot is just as viable of an option as Unity, but there are so many other cases where the open source alternative just doesn't match. When choosing open source software, we must be careful to check if it's being maintained, if the people maintaining it know what they're doing, and if the licenses are too restrictive or not. Now for the part where I slander every tech company to ever exist, the cons of proprietary software. Well, if you've been living under a rock for the last year, let me tell you about the Unity fiasco. Everyone knows Unity, that one game engine that literally everyone started learning around, I don't know, 2016, 2020. I'd know, I've been using Unity for the past 11 or 12 years. It's been the engine of choice for a very long time for me, and I actually started both of my games, Generations and Thievery in Unity. The footage in the background is actually from Thievery in Unity. Unity has been my favorite game engine for a long time, until stuff started getting deprecated before the replacement was production ready, and obviously the elephant in the room, the pricing fiasco. Unity basically introduced a new fee that would charge developers a fee based on the number of installs on their apps. However, the initial announcement lacked any sort of clarity like, you know, how the installs would be tracked? Would someone reinstalling the game charge you? What about games cheaper than 20 cents? How can you introduce something as stupid as this? My apologies, I may be slightly biased. Here's a segment from an unreleased video of mine actually, have a watch. So let's start off by making a new project in my favorite engine, Uni- Unreal! Oh yeah, forgot to mention, friendship ended with Unity, now Unreal is my best friend. Now other than the Unity pricing fiasco- So this one stupid decision by Unity has turned the beloved engine into an engine people rush to abandon. Many developers announced that they would switch engines after their current projects are done or even abandon their projects to switch engines. Many either chose Unreal Engine or Godot. Funny thing is, Godot is open source and Unreal Engine has its source code available. So in a way, even though Unreal Engine is not technically open source, people stopped using a proprietary engine to start using open source software. I mean, I know Unreal is not open source, don't flame me in the comments, but you get what I mean, come on now. Another thing is pricing. One thing I hate is subscription services. I miss the times when you could pay money for a software, receive the software, and optionally being able to update for a price. For example, with Adobe Photoshop CS6, I used that for so long until I had to upgrade to the Creative Cloud. Cloud. Even with my student plan, I pay like $20 a month for all my Adobe apps. At any time, Adobe can announce some stupid AI data collection thing that trains their AI on your works. Oh, wait. <laughs> and even another thing that I dislike is they honestly, truly don't care about the little guy. These companies that make these proprietary software care mostly about enterprise users who pay thousands of dollars per seat. Our $20 a month really doesn't even make a dent in the money pile. So if there's an issue that you and only you have, <laughs> the developers really won't care at all. And your lack of flexibility is also a problem, as you cannot modify or customize the software to fit your needs exactly. Also, there's something called vendor lock-in. If you design your workflow in a way where you are dependent on a certain product or company, you will have difficulty switching to another product, or you might just not be able to. For example, I create graphics using Photoshop. I import the .psd file into Premiere, use After Effects for some tiny changes. So, if I switch to DaVinci Resolve, for example, I'd have to export .png files from Photoshop, so I'd have to export every change rather than at live updating, re-import them, I'd have to export my DaVinci project to MP4, import it to After Effects, so changing one simple program in the workflow would destroy my ecosystem. So, I'm vendor locked to Adobe. Listen, at the end of the day, if you're just an average person, you'll need a combination of open source software and proprietary software. Can you use only open source software? Yeah, of course. The Arch users in the comments will probably just tell you about it without me asking. Can you use proprietary only software? 
Actually, probably not, because many proprietary software use some sort of open source software inside of it. But I don't know if that counts. Again, this is just a debate style video. I'm not siding with anything. I'm not saying open source is better. I'm not saying proprietary is better. Feel free to discuss this in the comments section. I'd love to hear what all of you have to say. Some of you really wrote some interesting comments in the YouTube short, so this long-term video probably will have even more interesting comments. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, wishlist TV online in the description below, and I will see you all later. Zaibkai out.